I, 21 female, suspect that I might be my boyfriend, 29 male of two years side chick. Here are some specifics. Tim and I have been dating for two years. We're both foreigners who live in Europe. The names have been altered. Tim is a fairly private guy in general, so maybe part of his odd behavior derives from that. To explain anything, I believe I must begin at the beginning. Tim and I met at a native English speaker event after each of us had been here for a year. We hit it off right away. Later that week, we went on a bar crawl with other attendees from the event and ended up. We arranged to meet up again a few days later, but when I asked whether it would be at my house or his, he said it had to be mine and that he'd explain why later. For the record, I don't live in an ideal setting for having anybody around, much alone guys, and he was well aware of the scenario. He came over and informed me that he is still living with his ex-girlfriend of approximately three months. He had his own room and everything but he was sleeping there since he had paid for six months of rent to give her some money. Okay, I realize this is strange, but who am I to pass judgment? He claims they're certainly split up, and I'm now sleeping with the man, so whatever. After a few weeks, we decide to start dating solely and formally. He claims he's just staying with his ex, whom we'll call Stephanie, for the next three months before moving on. Okay, so it's a strange scenario, but I trust him, and he'll go in three months. He expresses his dissatisfaction at having to live with her. He also revealed the reason for their breakup, which was that he found her cheating on him with her ex at a party. So I'm not concerned about them reuniting. I'm not completely at ease with the scenario, but it's workable. Tim does not move out after a few months. He claims he now has his own tiny apartment in the same home, but that staying there is so much better for him since he doesn't have to purchase any furnishings and the rent is low. Remember, we're foreigners, so purchasing a ton of stuff that you'll have to sell when you leave is inconvenient. He soon begins stating that he'll bring me over there to show me that they're living separately and such. To make a long tale short, it never occurred. When I urged him to question her about it, he said she'd be angry and blah blah blah. She was apparently aware that he had a girlfriend, but she didn't like it and wanted to reconcile. He ultimately moved out after a year. Not into his own apartment, but into his friend's spare room. I'd gone to this buddy's house before but only once, and it was the only time I'd ever met one of his non-mutual pals, which is suspicious and strange on its own. I didn't assist with the relocation, though I tried, thus I never saw him transfer his belongings there. Again, this was a temporary arrangement until he could get his own house. He has yet to move into a home of his own due to a variety of situations, including the firm being taken out, which resulted in job uncertainty, and him being extremely particular about choosing an apartment. It's been roughly 10 months since he moved into his buddy's apartment and despite several requests, I get to visit. He constantly says yes, but then says he doesn't want to intrude or be a bother and so on. So in essence, I've never seen where he lives. Those facts, together with the fact that I've never met his friends or skyke with his family, form the foundation of my suspicion. But here's where the actual meat comes in. I went Facebook stooping last night since I couldn't sleep. I looked for tagged photos of Tim since I know he's on about Facebook and doesn't allow tagged photographs and posts to appear on his page. While sorting through the photos, I came upon three of him from his summer visit home. In each of the three photos, there is an untagged female seated close to Tim. His arm is around her in two of the three images although. The pictures are more arranged and everyone's arms are around each other. I thought she's a buddy from home and she's in two of the images with pals. They are, however, shown in one photograph with his sister her husband, and their kid. As a result, the image is considerably more intimate. Stephanie's appearance is unknown to me, and she does not use Facebook. I can't seem to locate a photo of her on the internet. But I believe this girl is her. I'm not sure why I believe that, but I do. I did some more Googling and came upon Stephanie's grandmother's obituary. She passed away in January, so after Tim had moved out, and probably after they should have been broken up, Despite this, his name appears alongside Stephanie's on the obituary as a member of the family. I know he was close to the grandma and that she gave him property in her will, but I'm still skeptical. If what I assume is correct, he was able to keep this from me and her for two years, which is very remarkable. But I'm trapped right now. I don't want to bring up my rather weak proof with him until I'm certain, since he'll simply make an explanation, which I'll accept because I want to trust him and remain with him. I'm not sure how to gather additional evidence that the girl in the photos is Stephanie or how to know for a certain one way or the other. So that's where I'd want to get some suggestions. 
I'm not going to break up with him until I'm really certain, since I genuinely love him, but I'm not sure how I can be certain. Any advice or assistance would be much appreciated. However, please be constructive. Update. I did, and I began with a chat with Tim in which I made it quite obvious how much the whole situation disturbed me and why it was a problem for me. I attempted to explain why I was unhappy to him by showing him things from my point of view. He apologized passionately and claimed he understood. He sobbed, and I sobbed with him. He said that it was never his aim to harm me, that he had no idea this was such a big deal for me, and that he had been selfish about it. He promised that everything would change and that I would meet his friends, see where he was staying and Skype with his family and so on. He said that I am the most essential aspect of his life here, and that he cannot fathom his life without me. He said that he intends to locate an apartment for us to share and that after I finish school, he intends to return home with me for forever. He also said that the girl in the images was an old family friend and that he featured in the obituary because he is still connected with the family and that they still wish I was a member of the family. I decided to wait and see whether he kept his half of the bargain this time, so we made up and everything was fine. What I didn't say was that during my probing period before to this chat, I discovered the phone number for Stephanie's landline and decided to call it and ask for Tim. Stephanie's father answered the phone and, when I asked for Tim, he said to use his mobile phone since this was the landline. So, not exactly beneficial. Before you panic out about the dad, the home is set up as a duplex, with the parents having their own part and Stephanie having her own half. This is prevalent in little settlements around here. Tim contacted me a few days after we spoke wondering whether I had phoned Stephanie's residence and asked for him. I chose not to lie and confessed. He said that she texted him claiming that a female with an accent had phoned the home, asking for him, and he instantly assumed it was me. I claimed that I did it because I was thirsty for information and just wanted to know what was going on. I also informed him that the results were inconclusive. He became enraged and stated I had abused his confidence and was behaving insanely, which he isn't entirely incorrect about but I explained that I was obliged to do such steps since I believed I wouldn't obtain any answers any other way. I apologized for invading Stephanie's privacy and upsetting her and her family. After a few days, he cooled down and forgiven me, but warned me that seeing his friends would be difficult, since he told them what happened and they were furious that I would treat him so badly. I waited a few weeks to see if anything changed and unexpectedly, nothing did. So over the weekend, he got really intoxicated and I was able to access his phone with his fingerprint while he was asleep. I discovered messages from Stephanie the day before discussing what they should prepare for supper that night. He told me he was out of town for work that night. I discovered several hearts and I love yous, as well as his using the same pet names for her that he does for me. He informed her he was leaving town for business this weekend and that he would miss her. I went back over their communications from the previous several weeks and saw that he had sent her many of the same photographs that he had sent me. He had asked her to join him and his friend and her girlfriend for a glass of wine. He brought her up from work many times, and there were several discussions over who would make dinner that night and what they should eat. I went back and searched for times when I knew he'd slept over with me, and he'd always told her he was staying in a friend's house or out of town for business or anything along those lines. I also discovered a family group text message, which comprised Tim, his sister, his mother, and Stephanie. I looked at images of Stephanie that she had supplied him and could clearly tell that it was her in the photos I saw on Facebook. So you were correct. He's been living with her and seeing me on the side for the previous two years, while telling me how much he loves and admires me and how we would have a future together. I've been taken advantage of and fooled, and it makes me feel like a total. I haven't spoken to him yet, but when he comes over later this week, I want to inform him that I know everything. I also want to inform him that he is a terrible jerk. In a perfect discussion, he'd explain why he did it and what the heck he was thinking throughout, but I'm quite sure those are things I'll never know or comprehend. Obviously, I will end my relationship with him. I also want to write Stephanie a letter in which I explain my side of the situation. I'll tell her dates when I know he spent the night with me so she can cross-reference them with dates when he didn't return home. I also want to provide a USB drive with photos of Tim and myself over the previous two years, as well as screenshots of some of our recent talks. I can't make her trust me, but I want to do all I can for her. I believe I owe it to her as a fellow human being to inform her about the kind of guy she's been with for the last four years. 
I am open to any and all advice on my strategy and how to go from here. I'm not going to lie. I'm feeling completely confused and useless right now. By splitting up with Tim, I'm losing a significant part of my life in this nation, and I'll be feeling this void for a long time. So any assistance is much appreciated. Thank you very much for listening, and I apologize for the length of this post. I got a little carried away.